Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, hot off the presses, Digital Foundry this morning is reporting on some specs of the Xbox Scorpio. Now, they have a leaked white paper document that they actually verified on Microsoft's development portal, and the document is, in is um, entitled Reaching 4K and GPU Scaling Across Multiple Xbox Devices. Now, it gives us a much bigger picture of what Xbox Scorpio is. Although it does not confirm all of the specs, uh, it does confirm quite a bit of them and uh digital foundry is has some speculation thrown in there for what they can't figure out now i have to say that digital foundry doesn't just report on any rumor usually they try to confirm it with some developers and they usually um you know report on concrete rumors now we know they were spot on with the uh, switch and of course the ps4 pro they um released the specs for that months in advance before the system came out and of course we all know that that turned out to be true now as usual i will leave a link in the description of the video so you can click on the article for yourself and read it in its entirety now the article states that the race for 4k has begun uh playstation 4 pro is in the marketplace and while success in supporting ultra hd gaming varies dramatically between releases an established series of techniques are in place that are already capable of effectively servicing a 4k resolution with a comparatively modest level of gpu power now in the wake of its e3 2016 reveal for the new project scorpio console microsoft began to share details with developers and how they expect to see 4k supported on its new hardware a white paper was released on its developmental portal entitled Reaching 4K and GPU Scaling Across Multiple Xbox Devices. Now, it's a fascinating outlook on Microsoft's Ultra HD plans, and it also reveals more about the Scorpio hardware itself. For starters, Xbox One's ESRAM is gone. A small but ultra-fast array of embedded static memory integrated into the Xbox One processor itself. ESRAM was the high-bandwidth scratch pad designed to mitigate the lower-speed DDR system RAM on which the Xbox hardware relied. Now, an evolution of eDRAM attached to the Xbox 360 GPU, ESRAM is massively fast but suffers from one major shortcoming, the lack of it. Now, the Microsoft white paper rules out ESRAM for the Scorpio completely, while at the same time suggesting that developers continue to support it to ensure strong performance on legacy Xbox One hardware. Now, ESRAM remains essential to ach achieving a high performance on both Xbox One and Xbox One S, the white paper reveals. However, Project Scorpio and PC are not provided with ESRAM because developers are not allowed to ship a Project Scorpio-only SKU. Optimize optimizing for ESRAM remains critical, critical for performance on the Microsoft platform. Now, the white paper suggests that the process of render targeting ali um, aliasing, which suits Xbox One and achieves considerable memory saving, continues. But on PC, those targets can now exceed the older hardware of 32 megabyte limit, as you would expect in moving from 900p or 1080p to Ultra HD buffers. Adopting strategies that favor ESRAM are good for other platforms too. Microsoft says it saves memory, favors low-end PC cards, and limited VRAM, and makes it easier to hit 4K and boost visual quality settings. Now, I have to say, uh, it's good that ESRAM is gone. Um, while it was fast, it wasn't really the complete solution that uh, we needed it to be on Xbox One, the original one. Yes, it did help some games achieve 900p or 1080p, but you know it, it wasn't as good as the RAM on the PS4. Now, going forward, they've abandoned this, um, which is good, which also tells us that they're going to be using a better architecture, that they're going to be using a Polaris, where they're um, going to have a much higher bandwidth. Well, we already know this because Microsoft said that they're going to have 320 gigs gigabytes of, uh, of, of bandwidth. So that's a lot faster than what ESRAM provided. Um, now I'm just going to, uh, let me see here. I'm just going to scroll through this article a little bit here. Okay, it says there are there are other clues as to Scorpio's final hardware setup within the white paper. The 6 teraflop GPU is once again confirmed, with the GPU's compute power rated at around 4.4 times the capabilities of Xbox One. It also has 4 times more L2 cache, and this is also confirmed in the white paper. A new detail that does not tell us that much, except that the GPU architecture in Scorpio is at least as modern as AMD's Polaris line. Now, based on our discussions with Mark Cerny and the PS4 Pro, we can reasonably assume that Microsoft can customize its GPU core just as Sony did, with access to uh, Radeon roadmap features up to and perhaps beyond AMD's upcoming Vega architecture. Microsoft gives little here other than to confirm that Delta Color Compression is part of the Scorpio GPU feature set itself, just the same as the PS4 Pro. So, like I was stating at the beginning of the video, like um, there, there's some speculation thrown in here. They're saying that it could be at least, uh, well, it should be, it will be at least Polaris. Um, I, 
I think it's going to be Vega. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Vega because Microsoft has come out and said that they will be using the latest um, technology from AMD. And at the time of Scorpio's release, that will be Vega. Um, so, so, so that is that is some good news out of this, uh, kind of confirming at confirming at least uh, Polaris, but. Most of us that you know have dissected what Microsoft has said and the technology that are that are following the technology that AMD is producing, are, tend to agree that it's going to be a Vega GPU. Now, its application of Scorpio's power that is the focus of Microsoft's white paper and other hints about the hardware makeup of the console are few and far between. In wake of CES, there is a renewed speculation that Scorpio may feature more advanced Zen CPU cores. However, a throwaway comment within Microsoft's white paper on how developers may wish to use Scorpio's capabilities again makes this seem unlikely. We acknowledge that developers may not wish to spend all the additional GPU resources of Project Scorpio on resolution, and that it's not mandated, the paper says. To make the best games possible, developers will inevitably, be sp inevitably spend GPU resources on other quality improvements such as higher fidelity shadows, reflections, texture filtering, and lower draw distances. Another option developers might consider is frame rate upscaling, running graphics at 60Hz but the CPU at 30Hz and interper and interpolating the animation. Now, since PS4 Pro has offered several titles with high performance modes running on unlocked frame rates, and notably no, none of them have managed to double performance consistently from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. Microsoft makes no claim that the Scorpio is able to do so either and instead suggests compromise, running a GPU element at twice the speed while CPU bound elements are interpolated. Uh, I'm now, Microsoft has never suggested that um, it's going to have Zen cores. They actually confirmed eight CPU cores out of the gate, suggesting a higher clock version of its existing CPU technology. And all of its messaging has been about running existing game engines at 4K resolution with HDR rendering. Now, the white paper we've, that uh, Digital Foundry is reporting on concentrates on how this is possible. It says a 4.5 boost to the compute power suggests that 1080p engines will scale nicely to 4K on Scorpio. But the reality is that many Xbox One titles were rendered at 900p at base resolution. So the leap to 4K becomes uh, a 5.7 time increase in pixel count at the same time. So some developers may not wish to spend the GPU power on pixels alone. Now, like I said, um, you know, this kind of makes you think that it's not going to have Zen cores because once again, if it was having Zen cores, um, there'd be no need for this. Now, I have to say that this white paper that um, Digital Foundry is reporting on, I believe they said it came from like July. It was like posted in July. So it's quite possible that many things have changed in the cycle uh, from, from that point on. Um, I, I would have to say that Microsoft should probably say something. I don't know. Maybe they should bump up their, um, their, 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 their conference for the Xbox Scorpio because I have to say this rumor is a little bit damaging because a lot of people have been waiting out for the uh, Scorpio saying, you know, it's going to be so much more powerful, yada, yada, yada. And from what we're seeing here on this uh, white paper and this report from Digital Foundry is that the system, yes, is going to be more powerful than the uh, PS4 Pro, but it's just going to be a little bit more powerful. It's not going to be that much more powerful and it looks like some games are going to be it looks like it'll have more 4k native games that's for sure but it looks like it will have some upscale games using the same methods that sony is using on the ps4 pro so that could lose some sales some people could say you know what why should i even bother waiting for the uh, ps4 pro uh, sorry waiting for the scorpio when i can go grab a ps4 pro right now also too they're they're if these specs are true, they can't come in that much more expensive than the PS4 Pro because, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's more powerful, yes, but it's not that huge generational leap more powerful than the PS4 Pro if this document is correct. Um, I got to say it's a little disappointing on my part because I will say that if the Xbox Scorpio is running Jaguar cores, I don't think I'd be getting it because uh, I already have an Xbox One S. I have a PS4 Pro, and uh, for you, for those of you that follow my channel, I have a high-end PC. You know, I have over 12 teraflops of compute performance in my PC. You know, I have an i5 uh, overclocked to like 4.7 gigahertz. You know, I'm I'm pretty good on on that side. Um, there'd be kind of no reason for me to get the Scorpio because you know, with all the games kind of moving over to PC, like the, the, the first party games, you know, I'd be able to play it on my PC and I'd be able to play it at 4K native resolution. So, the, the, you know, the 
you know, the reason for me to own an Xbox Scorpio would be greatly diminished if this rumor is true. Now, if it was running, uh, you know, Ryzen with uh, Vega architecture, giving us six teraflops of performance, you know, using all the new um, comp compression algorithms that Vega is going to uh, give us, you know, giving us all the compute power that Zen is going to give us, of course, I would pick it up at a reasonable price, you know, to because, of course, you got the ease of play on console. But um, I, I got to say, this is not good news. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try to spin it. Um, if it's using Jaguar, a Jaguar CPU that is just, you know, faster, clocked faster, that just does not cut it. That is not the, uh, the leap that I was expecting out of uh, Scorpio. Now, there is much more news in this article. Like I said, I will link it down below so you guys can click it for yourself and read it in its entirety. Now, they go on to talk about checkerboard rendering, and they specifically mention the Rainbow Six method, and they encourage developers to use it. Now, I don't know if this is a problem with uh, Xbox Scorpio CPU, or if the bandwidth on the GPU is not high enough, or they simply could be giving the developers all the tools and all the options available to them to do what they want with the power that's available. Um, I guess we will find out soon enough as we come closer to Xbox Scorpio. Scorpio's reveal. Now, I got to say, this document is from July, and uh, that's a month after the Xbox Scorpio reveal. Now, from July until now, many things could have changed, so we don't know how current this uh, information is because it is quite an old document and things change. I am hoping that it will have a Zen CPU because, to be frank with you, a Jaguar CPU just upclocked is not enough, even with DX12. Also, the good thing is, is that um, according to these documents, uh, any game that is running 1080p, 60 frames per second currently on the Xbox One will be running 4K, 60 frames per second on the Scorpio. So this is good news. And any way that you, 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 you slice this information, um, it's still going to be more powerful than the PS4 Pro. Regardless if the uh, CPU is the same or if they're doing similar techniques to get to 4K, it's still going to be more powerful as the GPU has 6 teraflops opposed to the 4 teraflops. Microsoft specifically said that they wanted to wait until AMD had the latest architecture. So we know that it's not going to be Polaris because Polaris was already available. And we know that uh, they're using a custom sock, so they're able to customize it to their liking. Now, uh, PS4 Pro was able to steal some of uh, Vega's um, uh, FP16, FP32 calculations. So I would think that uh, Microsoft would have some availability of some of the Navi features. So some Navi features could make its way into Xbox Scorpio. And I want to just point out a post um, over here on NeoGAF by one of the developers. Now, the, the developer on NeoGAF was verified. Now, all he says all consoles are now x86 PCs and the architecture will remain the same. That's why Sony was able to quickly iterate on the PS4 and make a beefier version of of it. Scorpio is a next-gen machine with the added benefit that all your old games will still be compatible. From this point on, similar to PCs, you will not lose your library when you buy a next-gen system. Uh, Microsoft will need to do a little more work to make it clear to everyone that Scorpio isn't just a half-ass upgrade, which the PS4 Pro kinda is, but a full-blown next-gen machine that is just backwards compatible to your current library. Now, this is very interesting that the developer has said this. Um, but obviously, he has uh, access to the uh, Xbox Scorpio, so he is going to have some insight that we don't have. So I would ask all you guys out there, just be patient till Microsoft reveals the full details on this system. But I will say it is a little disappointing if it does not have Zen in it. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to leave your comments down below. I want to know if you think uh, this makes it just a little bit more powerful than the PS4 Pro. Thus, you would not hold out for it and you'll get a PS4 Pro. Or do you think it's a lot more powerful than the PS4 Pro? Do you think that Microsoft needs to come out and announce something on the specs to combat this leak? Um, does this make you uh, less likely to get a Xbox Scorpio? Are you a little bit disappointed? Please leave your comments down below and let's discuss this. Um, I ask you guys to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.